All right, so uh, I want to preface the video with some advice about taking apart the Oculus headset. The main obstacle you're gonna face is this outer fabric cover. It's, uh, the whole thing has an adhesive layer underneath it. Um, the order that you need to take it off, uh, take it apart is um, basically you can take the head strap out first if you want. Um, these two uh, side brackets will come out. Um, the top and bottom plastic shell, it's basically four pieces behind this face plate. The top and bottom come out first. Um, and to make it easier on myself, I ended up just slicing the fabric cover down the middle for this big plate because it, it just, you can, you could probably do it without cutting anything, but it's a pain just because it keeps re-sticking this adhesive stuff. And the cool thing is this entire, uh, this entire quest was taken apart using one bit and that's a Torx T5. This Torx T5 will take apart the entire headset. So um, in the video to follow, you'll be able to see the steps that I took to uh, take everything apart. The easiest uh, stuff to replace is gonna be, you know, the front face plate, the headband, the normal looking stuff. Um, once you get the top and bottom cover off, and the bottom cover also has the, the audio board, um, then you can get to the screws to replace or to remove this front face plate. Once the face plate is removed, you have easy access to the fan, heat sink, uh, motherboard, and then there's a ribbon to connect the, uh, the two cameras on each side, some miscellaneous brackets, and then an uh, inner bracket that holds the two uh, lens screen assemblies. So they're individual screens, individual lens boxes that, you know, of course it's a mechanical diopter, so they open and close. Um, the, those are the last thing that you can actually remove from the headset, so if you need to replace a lens uh, screen assembly, prepare to take apart the entire headset. So, um, but, I mean, aside from the, the sticky part right here and not being able to remove the pieces under it, um, it was actually pretty easy to remove. Granted, you know, I've had a lot of experience taking apart Macs. Um, this was very much like a Mac. There's a lot of similarities in there that I see, so I wouldn't be surprised if you know, it came from the same board ribbon manufacturer. So um, I guess uh, stay tuned for the video and you'll see all the steps that had to be taken to take this thing apart. All right, welcome. Today we're gonna to be attempting to take apart a Oculus Quest. So this is just the Gen 1 Oculus Quest, and this one actually has a bad screen on the inside. It's kind of dirty, but we're gonna, uh, hopefully it's kind of like the Go, and it'll be relatively easy to take it apart into its individual components. So we'll get started. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pop off these little uh, plastic rings. Just kinda of wanna work your fingernail around it until it wants to pop off. Don't put too much pressure, but you know, once you have enough uh, upward pressure, it should pop those off. Out the uh, face cover. So it looks like there's a couple little pieces of plastic in here that make up the kind of the outer band. So I'm gonna have to work that free. Um, this is definitely a good time to have a spudger and that'll allow you to um, pop some of these harder plastic pieces off without breaking anything. So I will kind of work that free and then we will come back. All right, coming back to the uh, front uh, fabric fascia here. So get your spudger in between um, the fabric part and that plastic that kind of surrounds it. So we're just gonna work the spudger in there and just start popping that out. It feels kind of weird to pry against the fabric, but 
seems to hold up pretty well. So it looks like this little piece um, is the only thing that really wants to separate right now. So once we get this part kind of pulled out more, we can look inside and see. You can kind of see inside. But it's not just a, this little plastic surround kind of feels really thick down there. So it doesn't look like it's going to pop out. It's more of the uh, fabric part that wants to come loose, so we'll go with that. Okay. So the fabric also seems like it's held on under these lens caps. That's interesting. Oops. Let's see if I can get a good look in there. So it looks like the the lenses are actually compressed into this fabric covering and are kind of pinching it in place. So I'm going to see if there's any non-destructive way to get these uh, lens caps off. This is different than the Go. The Oculus Go just had the those little uh, rings that go around the, the lens that once those popped off, um, you know, the covering just kind of came out over it. But these seem like they're kind of sandwiched in there. So I'm going to see how hard it is to pop these lenses out. Um, it does look like there's, that might just be for the glass part. It looks like a bunch of glue spots in there, how they hold the lens in place. So I'll work on that and we'll come back. All right, success. So this is kind of weird. Um, make sure the focus, okay. So in here, you can pull this back and kind of see, I already popped this one off, but um, about a half inch down from the lens is a little lip. So you gotta get, um, I just got my fingernail on there and applied some pressure while using the spudger on the top and then um, kind of on this side and the lens finally just popped up and off. Or at least a little, uh, I guess that would be like a little surround. So that might be what's actually holding the fabric in place. Yeah, there we go. So good look inside. So it's that piece that's actually holding the fabric around the lens. And then you can see on the other one, so that's the lip we're just gonna kind of pop off. So once you have the first one, um, you can get to the tabs a lot easier. A little easier. There's just a little catch in there, just something that doesn't want to come out. Okay, so now that that second one is kind of popped, mostly popped out, we'll just work it out from the edge there. Okay, so there's the uh, fabric face and there's the little plastic catches that hold the fabric kind of into the headset. All right, so taking a look, we have the two lenses and there's your mechanical uh, diopter adjustment. 
So I guess on the Quest 2 they made it all software, but as you can see on the original Quest, uh, if you have weird eyes that are really far apart, you can adjust it that way, or if they're really close together. And that's how that works. Alright, so let's find out how to remove the rest of this plastic face here. So I'm going to give it a good uh, look through and then we will come back. Alright, so our next step, um, I already did this side. You can see there's a little empty screw hole there. So you're just going to kind of want to roll this cover out of the way. So you have access to that screw and it's a T5 Torx. So the other one wasn't in very tight, I just kind of removed it. Straight up with the bit, this one's the same. Okay. So it looks like now we have a way to pop this little piece. I'm not sure that was the most awesome way to do that, but so the you gotta pull the little fin out from underneath that bottom part and it looks like a, the top will start popping off. Let's see if we can get the spudger to help that out a little bit. There could be another screw or set of screws up there. That's kind of diabolical to put them underneath something that's so hard to get out of the way. Okay, so like before, we'll just roll that up a little bit. Grab our T5. Sorry, my hand's kind of in the way. I have limited space. Okay, well you get the picture. There's a T5 Torx, looks like hiding underneath the fabric on either side above the eyepieces. So when the spudger doesn't pop something out, it usually means there's a, a screw or something hidden. So you're gonna need, you're gonna need some strong hands to kind of roll this fabric back and get to these fasteners. It looks like the fabric kind of stays unharmed. It'll just kind of roll back and flatten out, so. Okay, so then, of course, there's the other screw. I'm gonna get my hand out of the way once I remove it. Okay, so that's the top two T5 Torx. And this is similar to the Go, where the um, kind of the front plastic has to come out uh, to get to the other parts. Give it a final check. Oh, okay, yeah, they've they got two more up here. Or is that one more with a little cover? Okay, so we'll remove the remaining two uh, T5 and come back. Okay, so we got the other two screws out. And I'm just gonna give it a kind of a wiggle. Kind of 
work in that piece. Okay, it's mostly loose, but there's something else still kind of holding this front faceplate. So let me work with it a little bit more and we will come back. All right, so the good news is there's no more screws to actually take out. Um, what was holding it was just the uh, screw tab. So the screw tab, uh, it's this one right here. It's the one that's right under the outer screw. So it just took some prying and wiggling and it just popped out. So it's, it's got kind of a catch on there uh, to kind of hold it in place even after you've taken out the screws. Okay, so we have a little tiny ribbon here for the, I guess that's the face sensor. So we need to figure out how to get that ribbon off. And so this is very much like a MacBook ribbon. It's very thin. And it looks like they've just kind of glued it. Um, so those are little little melted plastic rivets that are kind of holding that on. And it doesn't look like we have a real good chance of getting that out from the other end because it goes way down in there um, underneath the board. So, um, so in this case, you may have to end up um, just carefully uh, breaking that little sensor free and when you go to reassemble it you'll have to super glue it or something to keep that in place because otherwise um, as you're continuing to disassemble you know this thing is going to get tossed around a lot and it's probably going to rip that ribbon so this, this design is much 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 more intricate than the Oculus Go and that one was relatively easy to disassemble. This one is not. You can see a little cooling fan in there. Alright, so I'm going to see if there's any other way of disconnecting this ribbon and we'll come back. Alright, so I managed to get it free. It's actually not too bad. Um, once you so the little melted plastic parts that are sticking through, let's get a close up of this. So the little IR board from behind and just use your fingernail or carefully a small metal tool and just scrape away the plastic that's squirted through those two holes. And then once you've got the plastic kind of taken off them, then you can just pluck it up with your fingernail. So when you go to reattach this, um, you just have to be careful and use super glue or plastic epoxy. So that'll allow us to get the face out of the way so that this ribbon um, isn't in danger of getting ripped open. So um, looks like we got some solid plastic pieces all the way around. So I'll work on a little bit more and we'll come back. All right, so this has turned out to be kind of a tough nut to crack. So my progress is um, once you pull back the lip on the bottom of the headset, it's going to expose these three screws. So these were also Torx T5, and I removed them. And then if you pull up the surround um, next to the diopter adjustment, there's another Torx T5 there. So it's looking like... Um, I mean, I tried prying the front cover. I know on the, the Go, uh, it was attached from the back with screws, so this one might be the same. So I'm trying to be careful. I don't want to, you know, pry on it and break something. Um, so I'm just going to go slow, and um, it seems like uh, working this cover off all the way around is going to be kind of important. So. Um, just wanted to show you the progress so far. Three screws there and also another one for the diopter. And looks like there's another one next to the volume button. Oh no, that one's gone. Looks like there just wasn't one there. 
Okay, so I'm assuming I'm going to find more of these screw holes as I go along, um, but we'll just find the other screws that are around the perimeter and take them off. All right, so progress update. Um, on the inside here, there is a small uh, little retainer gate for the volume. It looks like the, yeah, that's the volume control ribbon. So that little uh, connector in there, geez, can, let me see if I can, there we go. Um, so this little gate right here will flip up and down um, to, flip it back up. Uh, to release that ribbon from the motherboard in there. That way, uh, when you pull this bottom, it looks like this bottom plastic piece is going to come out next. Um, that way it doesn't yank on the ribbon. So that needs to be disconnected and it looks like the diopter adjustment is just a small wheel. So when it's put in place, it'll, it'll actually move these, but it doesn't look like you have to unplug anything on this side. So I'm going to keep working this bottom piece and then just be advised like after you get those screws out um, this padding here is held on by adhesive so this is their um, I guess it's just structural but you have to roll the spudger underneath this or work something underneath there to um, pull that adhesive up otherwise it's going to keep sticking to this bottom piece so right now um, I've disconnected the cable to this little bottom plastic and now I just have to work it out while simultaneously kind of unsticking from this. And then uh, we'll get that bottom piece out and come back. All right, quick update on the progress. So the bottom piece um, we've taken out. And so basically uh, this part will come out, it'll unstick from uh, the adhesive that surrounds this whole thing. So I'm just gonna make the call on uh, disassembling this thing. I'm going to cut this little piece of fascia off um, just right down the middle. It is possible if you wanna take the time to work the top piece out um, without cutting this, but the whole thing is, is adhesive here on the top. I'm sorry, let me get a better view of that. So, this big plastic piece on the top with the, I'm not sure what that board is yet, um, maybe the battery, it's, it definitely has to come out um, this way. And I believe there's still a couple screws that are holding the front face plate because the front face plate is disconnected right here. So I can easily um, tilt it back, look into the motherboard area, but there's something still holding it on the other side. So I'm assuming there might be some screws underneath um, this little piece, whatever this is right here. So just like the bottom piece came out, I'm gonna try to take this top piece out, um, but it is just a royal pain in the butt with the stickiness of this little surrounding piece. So um, just for uh, the sake of disassembling this, I'm just gonna shortcut it and uh, trim that piece in half so I can get that other part out but you can do it non-destructively if you're willing to take the time to kind of shimmy this thing out little by little while this piece tries to stick to it. It's just, it's an amazing pain and yeah, Oculus definitely didn't want anybody taking apart their headset. So um, I'm gonna work on this piece, getting it out and seeing what's underneath this part and we'll come back. Okay, so we got a way better look now at what's going on. So once that fabric piece is out of the way, make sure our focus is good. Uh, we are going to be able to remove that little top cover, get that out of the way. And as you can see, there are a couple more uh, torque screws holding this whole assembly here on top. Um, it, or actually the face plate on. Um, and then this should come out momentarily and then with the two screws right here, this one and this one, I should be able to remove the face plate so that we can see what else is in here. So one thing that's just making this a huge pain is the outer covering and it's just covered in glue. So any pieces that you try to remove from this assembly 
um, are just going to try to hold in place because they're stuck with a long, wide layer of adhesive. So that's what you'll be fighting um, if you try to open this and replace any parts. So these remaining long screws are also Torx T5. And we can finish uh, popping that face plate off. I uh, forgot to add that the little rubber surrounds. Um, they'll just kind of, you can pull them out without having to take the face plate off. I just pulled them out to see if there was any kind of screws I could get to, but that's how those go. I just kind of stick through the, um, stick through the hole and surround the camera. We'll add that to our parts pile. Looks like the Wi-Fi antenna is uh, just stuck to the faceplate. So once you pop that off, that little antenna should pop off the motherboard uh, without doing any kind of damage. The antennas always pop out. So that's something that you'll need to remember to reinstall if you're putting the face, face plate back on. All right, so we got a good view of the CPU cooling fan, heat sink, little motherboard. Uh, reminds me of a, of a Mac, actually. So as we go along, we're just going to take the components out one by one. Uh, the cooling fan looks really easy to remove. It's just a few torque screws and then just the old classic style pullout connector. Uh, looks like the cameras have semi easy to get two screws. I'm not sure. I'll have to dig a little more into that. Uh, that one looks really easy. So the bottom cameras, I can see the screws and connector. Top camera um, looks the same except for maybe this one right here. It has a screw that's kind of recessed. Uh, but the heat sink. Um, looks like it's semi easy to get to. So all in all, once you get the the hard stuff done, these outer um, shell pieces, then you basically have access to the whole inside of the Oculus Quest. So um, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll get started breaking down the internals. All right, we'll continue on, and I just want to reiterate. I probably could have uh, ended up working this thing out without cutting it, but that might be an easier alternative because once you smooth it back down, there's just going to be like a tiny seam there. So it'll definitely help you get access to the other screws to take this thing off. All right, so it looks like we can continue with that T5 and we're going to... Uh, we'll go ahead and remove the... Uh, cooling fan fasteners. Actually, before I finish doing that, this type of connector, uh, you just get your fingernails on it and pull straight out, and I would definitely just put like a thumb next to it. Um, it's just a habit, but sometimes it can pull up on the piece that's kind of, it's holding into, so I always try to put a thumb down to reinforce that. So it looks like uh, the first thing we can easily get off is that little cooling fan. This is also different than the Go. Um, the Go just had a, a flat heat sink with no fan, so they obviously decided that it needed a little bit more cooling. Um, okay, so I'm going to take a look here under this cover. Looks like a T5 is basically all you need. Everything I've touched is a T5. Okay, so this is just a ribbon cover. Uh, kind of helps secure the ribbons. And I'm trying to identify some of these pieces. This looks like a, a Wi Fi antenna, another Wi Fi antenna. Looks like this side has a long cable that connects to over here on the motherboard. And it looks like it has all of the classic uh, computer connectors. So if 
you have experience taking apart Max, this is definitely um, in your ballpark. So most of these connectors just have a kind of a flip up type retainer and then you can pull the ribbon out and then it's best to flip it back down. Uh, some of these are just kind of the pop up type so you can get your fingernail under that one and it'll pop straight up. Uh, this one also has a little retainer so we're going to flip up that little part and there we go. And we can pull the ribbon out. I always love the ones with the cover because it looks... okay. So this type we're going to, looks like it just pulls up, but it doesn't feel like they gave me anything to bite into there. Alright, so we'll grab a small bladed, just see if we can work a little bit of, huh, yeah there we go. So a small bladed will give you enough bite when they don't give you tabs to pull up. And then we have the Wi-Fi antenna. I'll just go ahead and pop that off. Go ahead and pop off the other Wi-Fi antenna over here. Okay. So we're going to give it a quick look. So it definitely looks like we can pull off that uh, upper Wi-Fi antenna. So I think right now I'm just gonna get everything that, that is kind of on top here covering the motherboard. Just kind of curious how hard it is to actually replace that. few Phillips screws and then we have that uh, looks like the left side Wi-Fi antenna and the cable for the right side looks like it runs under a lot of other stuff so we I'm just gonna hold off on that one for now until we have to okay so we got another simple pick up with your fingernail type and then the other type where you flip up on that little bar and we can pull the ribbon out. Okay, so the motherboard is disconnected by all the ribbons that I can see. So next we're going to, Looks like we might end up having to get this right side Wi-Fi antenna out of the way to get the heatsink. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the torque screws holding on that Wi-Fi antenna. And then I'm going to work on getting the heatsink freed. And then once I have the heatsink removed, I should be able to remove that motherboard. screw there. Okay, so we can at least move that out of the way. And it looks like this big ribbon has a small ribbon branching off of it. So I'm going to pull that free from that board. I'm not sure what that board is. And in this part, just be really gentle and careful. Make sure that's disconnected first. And then it um, looks like they've got some adhesive holding the uh, that ribbon to the heat sink. Okay, so it looks like this connector here is probably for the right side screen. So I see two identical orange ribbons poking through from the lens assembly and I'm going to assume that this one and this one are your screen connections. 
Another difference between the Go and the Quest is the Go had um, looked like one screen and just two lenses kind of taped to it, or glued to it, and then this one has uh, two individual screens for that uh, mechanical diopter adjustment. So this one also we're just going to pop up and it does appear that this board needs to be removed before we can remove that heat sink. Okay. So we got another uh, little flip up retainer. That's it for this ribbon. And I'm going to assume that the rest of this is just kind of glued in place. I don't see any more fasteners. So yeah, it says this uh, display jumper, and this is just relaying the uh, display signal over to the motherboard. So I'm just using my fingernail to kind of wiggle this back and forth until the that adhesive gives. And it looks like over on the top side, or the connector. Good work, but it's not coming off. It does look like just an adhesive pad sitting there though, so I'm just gonna keep working at it. This one might actually be good for the spudger. work that uh, thin blade underneath there and just work it back and forth until it unsticks. There we go. So for the most part the display jumper board just held on with some gooey adhesive and that is our last obstacle to removing the heatsink. So we'll get all these little also T5 screws holding on the heat sink bracket down here. And then hopefully that will allow us to remove the heat sink. So a little bracket comes off and hopefully, yep, heat sink is not held on by any more glue, which is awesome. So we are going to remove the four heat sink screws and then we should be able to pop that heat sink off. All right, back to where we were before I was rudely interrupted by a screeching neighbor and the battery dying. Now we will continue with removing the heatsink screws. Okay, so there's probably some thermal paste or a little thermal pad there, so we'll kind of, there we go. Just kind of wiggle it and that uh, paste should allow it to pop off. Alright, so looking at the uh, motherboard, it looks like we're just um, a few screws away from removing that, so we'll go ahead and pull those torque screws.
I don't see anything uh, still stuck to it, so I'm just going to give it kind of a wiggle. Oh, there we go. So it looks like they've used some thermal paste on the other side as well. So to kind of help cool that Snapdragon chip, they have the above heat sink with kind of a, I don't know what kind of cooling that is, kind of passive cooling. Um, sort of because there's no fins in the heat sink so it just kind of bleeds off the heat sink into the face cover or the bracket or whatever this is like the backing and through the back side as well it looks like it cools it on both sides of that chip so not too bad all right so looks like we have a couple more cameras to remove and the little uh, jumper ribbon for the cameras. The USB-C charger port looks like it's just a couple of uh, T5 screws. And then same for the other side, looks like it's all T5. Um, this type of connect here can be kind of tricky, so I'm going to save that for last. Because what happens is these are supposed to pop um, kind of up and out. They have the wire pushed into a hole there. So I need to pull up the wire from this side. So it's going to take um, some careful digging. And what I want to do before I do that is hopefully loosen this ribbon. Um, so the ribbon kind of I can twist it or move it around. And that will help me get that connector out without breaking it. So we'll go ahead and just remove, I'm gonna go along and just remove all the screws that I see since I'm taking it all the way apart. But of course, if you're just um, doing one component, you'll just do the screws for whatever piece you need to replace. So I'm gonna remove the screws and we'll come back. All right, in this step, we're gonna go ahead and take off the uh, little headband bracket and also the inner speaker. So the first thing you're gonna do is try to peel the Velcro back so this little Velcro strip comes off. And then you're gonna feed the headset strap out of that bracket and you wanna make sure you don't pull too hard on it. So push this little tab in and once you start working it out, just feed it in from the other side so you don't yank too hard on the little uh, springs. And then as you see, there's a couple Torx T5 and we'll go ahead and remove those. Um, it did have a little metal pla little cover on there. You just peel it up. It's just sticky tape. And then remove the two Torx T5 screws. And then you can separate the bracket from the speaker assembly. So just peel the rest of that uh, surround cover off. And there you have your speaker and the bracket. And it's just held on by a couple Torx T5 screws. And that's how you remove that. Okay, so we got most of the screws out. I will say the um, the top screw for the camera on this side and just the camera in general on this other side might be tricky to get out without pulling the bracket first. So I, and this one looks like we can kind of finagle it out. Um, so I took the screws out for this little backing bracket too, so I'm gonna pop that off next. Um, but for now, I'm just going to finish removing the Wi-Fi antenna. So these little clips, yeah, they pop out. So we'll get rid of that. And so this part looks a little bit tricky. And this might just be the pop up and off of it. Okay, awesome. So very much like a Mac, um, this little camera just pops up and off. So. Just use your fingernail, and it looks like this one they've covered with some tape. Some kind of rubbery tape. I'll just flick it open. So it's mostly unstuck. Almost feels like plumber's tape or something. Okay. So I am pretty confident this ribbon is held on by 
some decent adhesive. I'm just gonna pull a little bit up. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and leave this ribbon in place. I don't want to destroy it, and it's it seems to be held on there pretty well. So I'm gonna have to fight with the connector and get a little bit of uh, slack on that, but um, I would say we'll leave this ribbon in place. Not sure what that board is for. And then um, also have to finish removing this front bracket. I see one more screw up top. I might actually attach it to. Okay, so with the with that screw comes off this large metal casing, which I'm assuming is holding the battery. So once you get that center screw out, there is the battery. And you can see from the other side the uh, lenses and Feels like there's still something holding it on this side. So as you can see, this left cover, uh, the thing that holds the strap wants to come off. And the only thing that's holding it is that ribbon. I always hate these because it's hard not to. Okay, there we go. Got the, if you get the spudger in and just pop it straight up, um, should hopefully be able to pop it up without damaging it. Um, as you can see, this little cover right here, I'm not sure how they assemble this um, from the factory, but it's, I mean, it's gonna be hard to uh, disassemble this thing with this cover in the way. So um, if you don't wanna you know, slice the top there, then um, just be prepared to fight with this thing for a little longer. Oop, there's the IR board. Okay, so you can see the left side is loose and there's still something catching on that. Nope. Okay, so the other side is ready to come off and we're just going to have to pop up that connector like the other one. Try to get a little bit of slack on it first. There we go. Okay, so what we have left is the, the two side covers with the speakers, and um, these also hold the, the head strap. So these two units, um, we'll have to look a little bit closer to see if we can get those off. Um, this also looks like it's the, uh, it's the audio jack on this side. And that side, okay. So what we have left here is the um, individual screen and lens assemblies. So I'm not sure. I'll go ahead and finish taking the cameras out. I'm just gonna kind of set these in the arrangement that I removed them so I don't confuse the locations. Okay. That's good. Let's flip up on the little connector and then the camera should pop out. So that's the lower right and then also have some of the Kind of sticky tape goop here. So you can see it's really stress stretchy. It's kind of like a latex. Okay, and then we'll pop that one up and finish removing the camera. All right. 
right. So we'll be leaving the little ribbon in place and looks like the power button is uh, integral to the ribbon. So unfortunately, if you have a power button issue, um, you're gonna have to use a heat gun or something to really soften the adhesive here uh, to be able to pull it up a little bit easier. And it does look like kind of the same as a Mac. The, they have the um, liquid damage indicators. All right, so let's figure out how to remove these lens assemblies and screens. This one is probably not the right thing to... So it looks like there's tabs on each one of these and I'm just gonna kind of push the tab out of the way and we'll lift the lens assembly hopefully off of the screen. I'm gonna pop this back in for now and okay. So it looks like the little um, little slider rods just pull out of this end. So I am going to try to leave these screens um, and lens assemblies complete. And that way there's less chance of dust becoming a problem. So here are the two lenses with the uh, LCD screens. All right, so all we have left is the uh, main, I guess this would be the main uh, support bracket with the uh, power button and camera ribbons battery connection, uh, lens, or no, what was that? That was for the speakers. So yeah, that's basically it. That's the inside of the Oculus Quest. And so it wasn't too bad. And I am shocked that a Torx T5 basically disassembled the whole thing. Um, it's unusual, but it's cool with me not having to switch t tools too many times. And then uh, I just want to show you again the bottom plate. So this was the first component removed and I removed it. Uh, it took a long time because of the adhesive, but just remember to uh, look in there and find the ribbon that's connected and just open up the, uh, the little uh, retainer gate for that. So you don't pull on the connector while it's still closed in there. So that's our volume buttons and then the uh, little diopter slider. So that is it. Not bad. Um, it's pretty. It's a little more intricate than a newer Macintosh, but um, it's somewhat similar if you can get around the, you know, the the outer cover. That's the only thing that made this into a real challenge. If that wasn't there, this would have been a snap. So, um, as you can see, there's a lot of different parts, and you'll have to take off some more than others depending on what you're replacing. But I would say the um, the battery is kind of so-so mid-range, so is the uh, motherboard. Um, the fan is actually pretty easy to replace. And you know, I mean, you can kind of see the order that I went. You don't especially have to go in that order. You just basically have to remove the parts that are in your way and until you get down to the part you need to replace. So if you found the video informative or you liked it, please like and subscribe. Thank you.